Hi everyone. In this particular video, we are going to discuss all the important dimensions related to Himalayan mountain system with respect to UPSC CSE examination. And by the way, this is one of our video in our Indian mapping series in which we are going to discuss entire Indian mapping in theme based manner. So let's get started with this particular video. Now, first of all, when we talk about Himalayan mountains, they are also known as Himadri and Himavan. And when we talk about extent of the Himalayas, they stretch for a distance of about 2400 km from Nanga Parvat in west till Namcha Barwa in east or from Indus Gorge in the west till Brahmaputra Gorge in the east. And particularly in northeast, they exist as Purvanchal range in north to south direction. By the way, on Purvanchal range and other hills of northeast, I have made a dedicated video. You can check it out. Now, let's discuss first of all about the formation of Himalayas. So, about 220 to 250 million years ago, there was a supercontinent by the name of Pangaea. However, over a period of time, this Pangaea got divided in two parts that is, northern part and southern part. Northern part was called as Angara land. It consisted North America, Europe, Asia and southern part was called as Gondwana land. It consisted South America, Africa, southern part of India, Australia, Antarctica. Now, between the Gondwana land and Angara land, there was a long, narrow and shallow sea known as Tethys Sea. Sediments were brought by the rivers from these land masses and these sediments were deposited in the bed of the Tethys Sea. Over a period of time, even the Gondwana land further got disintegrated and Indian plate broke away from Gondwana land and Indian plate started moving towards Eurasian plate. However, due to density differences between Indian plate and Eurasian plate, Indian plate got subducted beneath the Eurasian plate and because of these subduction and compression, a series of folds were formed which eventually turned in Himalayas. So this is the way as how Himalayas were formed. Now, if you observe carefully, you will find that Himalayas, they are curved at western and eastern ends and it is called as a syntaxial bends of Himalayas. Now, this curved shape is convex to the south and it happened because maximum push was offered at these two ends when Indian Peninsula was moving towards the Eurasian plate. And recent studies have in fact also shown that even today, Indian plate is moving towards the northern direction at the rate of 5 cm per year and particularly Mahabharat range of Himalayas is still in the state of rigorous uplift. And in fact, there are many evidences to prove that Himalayas are still rising. For example, number one, it has been found that some of the geological formations in Shivalik and Tibbat are similar. However, Today, Tibbat is much in height compared to the Shivaliks. It indicates that in past, Tibbat and Shivalik were of similar height, but after that, Tibbat has risen, which has happened because of the continuous movement of Indian plate in the northern direction. Also, we find this particular thing that there are frequent earthquakes in the Himalayan region, which shows that Himalayas have still not yet attained the isostatic equilibrium and still they are moving further. Also, Many of rivers are still in youthful stages and there are indications that they have been rejuvenated in the past because of the continuous uplift and movement of Indian plate towards the northern side. So all these are the indications to point that still the Indian plate is moving in north side and is crashing in Eurasian plate. Now let's come to the arrangement of the Himalayas. So let's see arrangement of Himalayas from north to south direction. So. In extreme north, we have the Pamirs and Pamir is popularly known as the roof of the world and it is actually connecting link between Himalayas and high ranges of Central Asia. Then further in the south, we have Trans Himalayas. Now Trans Himalayas literally means beyond Himalayas and it includes the ranges which are immediately in the north of Great Himalayan range. And sometimes they are also called as Tibetan Himalayas because of their vicinity around the Tibet region. Now, when we talk about ranges within the Trans Himalayas, we have three most important ranges here. And the another most is Karakuram range. It is also called as Krishnagiri range. And it forms India's boundary or frontier with Afghanistan and China. 
also this karakoram range it acts as a water shed water divide between india and turkistan also this range is home to some of the greatest glaciers of the world outside the polar region and often it has also been called as the third pole in fact the mountain peaks such as k2 which is the second highest peak in the world it is located here and uh, right now when we talk about the territorial status right now it is under the pakistan occupied kashmir further we have other important mountain peaks also here such as we have gasher bram one which is also known as hidden peak then there is broad peak and gasher bram two all these peaks are above the height of 8000 meters then further moving on we also have the ladakh plateau which lies in the north east side of karakoram range this ladakh plateau it has actually been dissected because of the number of streams and rivers that flow from here and because of this dissection we find that plains such as soda plains debsang plains they have been created here okay also debsang plain have been in the news because of the confrontation between india and china that is going around here now moving on to the next range so further towards the south of karakoram range we have a ladakh range which runs nearly parallel to karakoram range and it lies between indus and shok river valley and also lay it lies on foot of ladakh range when we talk about highest point here mount rakaposhi is highest point in ladakh range and further there is kailash range which is extension of ladakh range towards the tibet region it can also be defined as offshoot of ladakh range highest point in kailash range is mount kailash which has a height of approximately 6714 meter and river indus it originates from northern slopes of kailash range moving on then finally towards the south we have next range that is zaskar range when we talk about zaskar range it branches off from great himalayas at approximately 80 degree east longitude and then it runs more or less parallel to the great himalayan range also nanga parvat it forms its culmination points in the northwest direction and if you observe carefully here we also have dosai mountains which are sometimes included in this particular range also one more thing i would like to tell you that we also have here dosai plains dosai national park and in fact dosai national park it also host snow leopard himalayan ibex and red fox so that is all about zaskar range then moving forward in further south we have great himalayas now when we talk about great himalayas they are approximately 150 kilometers away from northern edge of north indian plains and folds in great himalayas they are particularly more asymmetrical and they have steep slopes towards the south and gentle slope towards the northern direction also we when we talk about extent of great himalayas they are referred to as extending from nanga parvat in northwest till namcha barwa in north east we have discussed it earlier also now when we talk about highest peak in great himalayas it is obviously mount everest which stands at the height of 8850 meter some places you will also find 8848 meter now nepali's name of mount everest is a sagar matha it is called as chomlukma in tibet however chinese they have uh, uh, put this particular agenda forward that they want to rename this particular peak as kom longma which means mother of the world so if a question comes that these are the names of which mountain peak so they are all name of mount everest also uh, understand this particular thing that there are some other important peaks also in this great himalayas and these peaks in descending order of altitude are kanchenjunga lotse makalu dholagiri mansalu gosainath etc moreover we also have some important passes in great himalayas and we are going to see location of these particular passes from west to east side so first of all we have burzil pass and zojila pass which are in jammu and kashmir then there is baralachala shipkila pass which is in himachal pradesh there is thagala niti pass and lipu lake pass which all lie in uttarakhand and then there is nathula jelepla which is in sikkim all these are very important passes in greater himalayas please keep it in mind for upsc examination then further moving on after great himalayas next range that we have towards the south is middle himalayas also called as lesser himalayas now these particular ranges have been known by the names of himachal himalayas also 
and within middle himalayas we have multiple ranges which are peer panjal range dholadhar range masuri range nag tibba mahabharat lake so you can see arrangement of these particular ranges here on the screen and in this most important range is peer panjal range in kashmir peer panjal range is longest and one of the most important range and it extends from jhelum river to pyas river and also it is separated from zaska range by valley of kashmir and when we talk about valley of kashmir it is believed that valley of kashmir it was once occupied by a lake in pleistocene age and it was filled with a lot of sediments however over a period of time this region got uplifted and present kashmir valley was formed water was drained out of it and some of important passes in peer panjal range they are peer panjal pass bidil pass there is golabghar pass and banihal pass so these are some of most important passes that lie here then also kishan ganga jhelum and chenab they cut through the peer panjal range kishan ganga is often in news also because of the hydroelectric power plant also if we move further towards the eastern side you will find that we have here masuri range nag tibba range and mahabharat range and if we talk about elevation of middle himalayas then they are less than greater himalayas and therefore they are less hostile and majority of hill resorts hill stations such as shimla masuri rani khet nainital they are located in this particular range so that is all about it then moving further to south we have shivalik range and shivaliks they are also sometimes called as outer himalayas because they are outermost layer and when we talk about extent of shivalik they run parallelly to lesser himalayas for a distance of about 2400 km from potwar in northwest to brahmaputra valley and they are actually a kind of an unbroken succession of low hills and mountain ranges there will be a gap of 80 to 90 km where because of tista river valley a kind of a lowland area comes but largely they are unbroken succession of ranges also when we talk about shivaliks they are largely formed of sand gravel and conglomerates which have been brought by the rivers which have flown from the higher ranges of himalayas also we find that here we have ranges such as dundwa range which is in uttarakhand there is churia ghat hills which are in nepal and they are also actually the part of shivalik range further when we talk about formation of shivalik hills they were formed in the last after the formation of great himalayas and actually what they did they obstructed the course of rivers that were draining from the higher reaches of himalayas and here temporary lakes were formed and within these lakes a lot of debris was deposited however over a period of time these rivers have cut their course through the shivalik and these lakes got drained but those pebbles debris that were there they have stayed there and they have led to the formation of dunes they are called as dunes in the west and duars in east and we have example of dehradun which has been formed by these pebbles so they are based on these pebbles also when we talk about the forest cover on shivaliks we find a peculiar pattern here on eastern part of shivalik range we find that there is thick forest cover but forest cover actually declines becomes thin towards the western side also southern slope of this particular region they are almost completely devoid of forest and also they are highly dissected by seasonal streams and these seasonal streams they are called by the name chos and please keep it in mind because in prelims examination such kind of a questions could be asked so this is all about shivalik range and finally guys we can also see himalayas in regional aspect regional division of himalayas could be done so we are going to see this regional division from west to east side so first we have punjab himalayas this is an approximately 560 km long himalayan stretch between indus and satluj river then after that next one we have kumau himalayas so they are between satluj and kali river and it is a stretch of around 320 km and nanda devi kamet they all are located in kumau himalayas then we have nepal himalayas which is a stretch of about 800 km and it is spread between kali and tista river then finally we have assam himalayas and these assam himalayas they are spread over a stretch of 750 km and they are between tista and brahmaputra river okay and when we talk about namcha barwa the most eastern extent it is also located in assam hills so this is also one of a way to see the himalayas that is the regional division of himalayas 
is one more aspect I would like to discuss that is important national parks in Himalayan region. So let's see them in manner of the states in which they are located. So we have a Hamis National Park which is in Jammu and Kashmir region and it is very popular for snow leopard. Then there is Great Himalayan National Park. It is in Himachal Pradesh around Kullu region. Then we have Corbett National, Corbett National Park which is in Uttarakhand onto the foothills of Himalayas. Then we have Nanda Devi National Park in Uttarakhand and uh, the Valley of Flowers Nanda Devi, it has also been declared as UNESCO World Heritage Site. And Nanda Devi Peak which is world popular, it is named after that peak. Then we have Valley of Flower National Park in Uttarakhand. Okay. Then we have Rajaji National Park in Uttarakhand. Also, there is Govind Pashu Vihar Wildlife Sanctuary in the state of Uttarakhand. After that, we have Kanchenjunga National Park in the state of Sikkim and Kanchenjunga has also been declared as World Heritage Site by the UNESCO. So guys, this is all about this particular video. I hope that you have liked the video. It actually takes a lot of effort to make these interactive video. So if you have liked, please do hit the like button. Please do subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends.